I would like to call the meeting to order of the uh, <coughs> county commissioners. Um, thank you for attending. First order of business is to call um, call order and termination of the We do have uh, everyone here tonight, so appreciate your attendance. Uh, first item on the agenda is Pledge of Allegiance and Education. I'll turn it over to Commissioner Hutchins. Be able to please stand. Face the flag. Pledge. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to recognize any elected officials that are here tonight. Are there any elected officials here with us? Okay. Next item on the agenda is recognition of any veterans that are here. If you're a veteran, if you'll please stand so we can recognize you. Chris Green, Tax Administrator. Thank you all for being here tonight. Next up on the agenda is the uh, is a motion to adopt the proposed agenda unless there's any changes on the agenda. I'd like to make a motion that we draw up one item in terms of budget amendment for election reform to the agenda. And if there's no objections, then approve the rest of the agenda. Second. We've got a motion to the second. Discussion? All right, all those in favor of the, the uh, motion to adopt the, the uh, uh, modified agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is citizen recognition. Um, Madam Chair, is there any? Madam Clerk, is there any? Just have a motion. Is there anyone that signed up tonight to speak? Is there anyone that, that came tonight with intentions to speak that didn't have an opportunity to sign up? Okay. All right. Next item is the consent agenda, and I'll turn that over to our county manager, Mr. Richardson. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here tonight. We have before you several consent agenda items. I'll briefly cover those and happy to answer any questions. First item A, uh, your minutes from the November 19th regular meeting will be reviewed in consideration. Uh, I have two budget amendments this evening. Uh, the first, Budget Amendment 30 from our Social Services Department is the United Way grant in the amount of $2,698 that will be used for emergency assistance uh, for persons in need. The second budget amendment, Budget Amendment 31, is in the Cleveland County Sheriff's Office. Uh, this budget amendment is donations from the Dover Foundation and from the Bailey Endowment. The total of those two uh, pieces of revenue coming in are $15,500 to be earmarked for the purchase of ballistic vests. In addition to uh, those two budget amendments, Commissioners to item E from our tax assessors department, abatements and supplements. I am pleased to report to the commissioners in the month of October that we build all other state board properties. Uh, Duke Power is the, most, is the majority of the uh, revenue that was billed in November, and that's the um, that is the reason for the $4,032,000. 
$32,571 number when we went to November. Abatements are totaling $38,551.28. And finally, from tax administration, our November collection reports uh, for personal property uh, recognizes 59% collected year to date. And that would be uh, the November collection report. Finally, I've got items G and H both from our health department. And the first item for your consideration tonight is uh, revisions to the financial eligibility fee. Uh, commissioners, you'll find in your package tonight uh, a summary of changes to the financial eligibility fee collection policy that we passed through the Board of Health for your consideration uh, for this evening. And then finally, from the health department, environmental health, fee changes. We've got uh, two things there for your consideration. Uh, Board of Health unanimously approved recommendation of changes and deletion of environmental health fees and operation recovery limits. The first is food and lodging establishment fee, and that is consistent with North Carolina environmental health legislation to increase annual fee permits for food and lodging uh, to match that requirement. Second is for uh, the expired permit fee. And just a little bit of history on that. The environmental health fee for expired permits was implemented in 1999. And it was to accommodate builders and homeowners purchasing permits unable to begin construction before the permit expired. Uh, and so what we're recommending that is a $250 fee and it has a uh, shelf life of five years and what the recommendation is is that the ex expired permit fee be eliminated from the fee schedule and therefore when the permit expires the owner will need to come forward and uh, request a new permit fee. So that is the consent agenda. It's heavier than normal. Happy to answer any questions on any of these items. Commissioners, you heard the consent agenda. Is there any uh, questions? I've been heard. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. <coughs> a motion from Commissioner Hutchins. Second. And second from Commissioner Allen. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Now it comes down to uh, uh, a time of our meeting that well, I know we all enjoy. Um, this uh, is, is near and dear to all of our hearts. Um, uh, it's Constitution Day essay winners. And uh, that's one of the things that we swore to uphold whenever we were elected in office. Uh, we swear to uphold the Constitution. Uh, I had an opportunity last night to attend the uh, swearing in of the school board members as well. Um, so there's something that's, that is, um, um, deserves our attention. We have uh, Dr. Anita Ware here tonight. She's going to introduce some students winners and also like several other people should know here so thank you for coming uh, Dr. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, every year we have uh, high school students who uh, write essays about the Constitution to a different prompt and then all of our high schools select an overall winner. Those essays come to central office and we have a committee that actually reads all the essays and selects a county winner. So tonight, I'd just like to recognize uh, three of our four high school winners and our overall winner. And then I will introduce, um, Mr. Turpish will come up and uh, present something to them. Um, if you'll come forward when I call your name, Micah Croft is the winner from Crest High School. Courtney T from Kings Mountain High School. And Easton Bragg from Shelby High School. Maggie Terry from Burns High could not be here. There was a conflict with an orchestra concert tonight. So. And I'm going to let them introduce their guests tonight to you. Um, I'm Easton Gregg, and I have a, a large bundle in my family. I have my grandparents here, uh, my mother, my father, my youngest brother, and
at this time I'd like to introduce Bill Turpin. As some of, some of you know, I represent the Shelby Tea Party. And about four years ago, we were uh, discussing the, what we thought was the lack of knowledge in the general populace about the Constitution. So we decided to do something about it, and we contacted the school system, and we got connected up with the 10th graders, uh, and we sponsored the essay contest. So it's, uh, it's my pleasure to present uh, the, the money that these uh, students have won uh, from the Shelby Tea Party. <coughs>
United States of America. Among these various articles, clauses, and adamants sits the Ninth Amendment of the Bill of Rights, what is arguably the most important, important amendment. The general 21st century summation of this amendment is the rights of the people, not enumerated or listed in the Bill of Rights. What sounds like a simple clause has caused many interpretation problems throughout history. Problems that ultimately reveal the utility and importance of the Ninth Amendment. The core portion of the Ninth Amendment is its service as a reinforcement of the rights maintained by the people. It begins by saying that the rights written rights, or written rights, excuse me, of the Constitution, those that were meant and more importantly, designed to give power to the government, will not be used to take away or disparage the rights of citizens. This brings about an important distinction in government. Previous political theories often source the states as the bodies granting rights to the people, and in return also take the Ninth Amendment does exactly the opposite of that, after mentioned. The Ninth Amendment enforces the idea that the government does not have any rights unless given by the people. In essence, one facet of the Ninth Amendment is that it acts as a safeguard from the federal government usurping rights of the people. If one takes into account the fear that the founding fathers had of tyranny and abuse of power that they themselves experienced as colonists and many of their ancestors suffered under the British, the British Isle, then the protection of the individual from the government that they felt was so paramount. Another power of the Ninth Amendment is its functionality, functionality as a fodder, fodder for new unenumerated rights. The government of the United States is a continually changing entity, and this can be seen in the amendment process itself. The Constitution is a living, breathing document that has periods of radical changes and stagnant times as well. In the 21st century, the Supreme Court is always interpreting cases of rights enumerated and not enumerated within the Constitution. This is where the Ninth Amendment, again, comes into play. Because of the vagueness of the Ninth Amendment, all 21 words of it. It can act as a legitimate source for rights disputed. A premier example of this is the landmark decision in Roe versus Wade. This decision upheld the legality of abortion within the first trimester. The right of women to decide on whether to abort a pregnancy is not expressly written throughout the Constitution. And at the time of ratification, it would, have, it would not have been considered. This is where the Ninth Amendment comes, becomes vital. As seen in Roe versus Wade, the Ninth Amendment has some elasticity to it that allows for the inclusions of new rights that are pertinent to modern time periods. Had it not been for the Ninth Amendment, If one looks into modern times, the importance of the Ninth Amendment will only become more and more vital to the Supreme Court and the United States as a whole. Modern society has countless issues that need to be determined for constitutionality. Same-sex marriage has been atop many political agendas and will continue to do so until it is reviewed in the Supreme Court. The justices on the Supreme Court will likely cite the Ninth Amendment in such an issue, too, because of its use. People often do not realize the importance of the Ninth Amendment and is rarely given any glory, but the roles it plays are paramount to the nation's continuity. The Ninth Amendment not only protects the people from the government, but it also offers a place for inclusion of unwritten rights among the people. In conclusion, the Ninth Amendment is the most important and valuable portion of the Bill of Rights because of its many uses. A core principle of the Ninth Amendment is the protection of the, of the individual, an idea that was a cornerstone to most every founding father's political ideals. Their past experiences with kings, tyrants, and rigid government informs the creation of an amendment that not only serves as a chief sentinel for the people, but also as a flexible clause to allow the inclusion of unwritten rights an idea essential to the longevity of the United States Constitution. the second time I've heard you give that speech and uh, it's it's obvious that you're, you're passionate and the work that you put in there so I really do appreciate you bringing it to the stage. I appreciate you for having me. Uh, yes, 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 uh, as all of you have looked at the Constitution and have uh, researched it for your uh, comments, uh, have any of you ran across the terminology or not terminology but groups called the Good with it. Uh, the, con the 
Romans, and here the Roman church, and it was done several times. And so the Cincinnatians were a group that uh, were military people, and the philosophers basically were pro Jeffersonian. Next item on the agenda is recognition of one of our own that's retiring. Um, we've got Mike Branch here tonight. Uh, he's going to be retiring after 33 years of service. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, 33. We'll see. Yeah. 33 years of service. So, uh, what we'd like to do, Mike, is uh, if you would come up, we've got a resolution that we've already um, looked at. And, uh, we want to talk about you just a little bit. Brad, oh, <laughs> Brad, on you. And uh, I know you got short time for disease, so uh, we appreciate you coming to our meeting tonight as well. But, uh, um, what I'd like to do is, is read the resolution um, first and then uh, uh, ask the commissioners if they have any comments. Then we could go down and take a picture with Mike and, um, so we we'll remember what he looks like uh, after he finishes up the end of the year. So I guess you were a sick time here. Okay. Uh, this is a resolution of recognition of Communications Director Mike Branch. Whereas, effective December 31st, 2013, Mike Branch will retire from Cleveland County and, whereas Mike has been an employee of Cleveland County since June 1982, beginning as a telecommunicator and retiring as a Communications Director, and whereas Mike has assisted the department in many major upgrades throughout his career, including the use of CAD, uh, in the mid-1990s, and whereas throughout his career, Mr. Branch has received several Region C citations for his dedication and excellence to service, a true accomplishment in this line of work, and whereas this year, Mike was instrumental in planning and installing a major 911 phone system upgrade that provided the ability to switch from analog signal to internet protocol-based system for better functionality which will prepare the Cleveland County Communication Center to be the next generation compatible and whereas throughout his years of service, Mike has earned the admiration, respect, and friendship of those who, uh, with whom he has worked and come into contact. Therefore, be it resolved by the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners that Mike Branch be commended for his years of service to the county and the citizens that we have and the citizens and we extend to Mike best wishes for many years of good health and happiness during his retirement and, and his future endeavors. Um, this is the 17th day of December. Commissioners, you've heard the proposed resolution. Move your approval. Is that a motion from uh, Commissioner Hall? Yes. Have a second from Commissioner Hutchins. Any other discussions? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I don't have anything or anything else to say. I don't know why. 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 I don't
Johnson County. I'm a deep, really dedicated, and uh, probably numerous people out there that probably need assistance that you were able to send a fire truck and ambulance or police department and just back in your social media over here. If you have a nickel follow up, you need to get kicked. We have a good advantage. I'll say that. You talked about a little. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. Anyone, anyone else have anything? I just congratulations. say congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, I think it says volumes when your peers and across the state recognize you for the job that you've done and for taking us on into the next generation and the next era of our communications concerns. Congratulations. I hope I lived in new name. I know you're always out there in the forefront seeking attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But uh, you operate behind the scenes, but thank you so much for a great job. Thanks for your 33 years. Mike, Yeah, plan on. <laughs> Mike, I'd like to say, I mean, you know, I thought about, uh, I've been thinking about this a lot since Notice Don't Send it. You and I, I know I talked to you and you is going to be retiring. Um, you know, it's not something you did for, for the glory or anything like that. It's something that sometimes goes unsaid, but all the work that you did with 911 and the protection of our residents and the safety of our residents, you don't know how many how many families' lives you've impacted over your 33 years. Even though you might not be there on the scene when something happens because of the work you did, you really made an impact in our, in, in our lives. So we appreciate you a bunch. Thank you.
of those 17, 15 were LMI. And he was quick to point out to us that the machinery that he was able to purchase with this grant enabled him to bid on a project. He was awarded that project. It's a multi-million dollar contract that will be bringing more business into Cleveland County and he is actually going to be hiring even more workers. So this was a huge success all the way around and I was really completely you know, great that we were able to get this and able to work with y'all on it. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain those. Thank you, Mr. Just time for any questions. Hearing that, I'll declare the public hearing open. Any of those wishing to speak for or against the Community Development Block Grant, please come forward. Come up, state your name and address. My name is Robert Williams. I live in Boston. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, unsure about this exactly what grant this is. I remember reading something about Mako getting a grant, and I thought it was years ago for uh, some sort of equipment purchase. And uh, I'm just afraid that we, we're taking this grant program uh, way past in, encouraging economic development by bringing in new business. Typically when a business bids on new business and needs equipment. They, they work through uh, financing with a financial institution and that kind of thing. Uh, if, if I'm running a machine shop like Mako is a machine shop, and I'm familiar with what machine shops do, and I know the equipment that goes in the machine shop, the blades and the machines and various CNC computer uh, operating equipment and, and every machine shop I've ever known anywhere, they've always either purchased, they either rented or purchased their own equipment. And now we're stepping into a, a situation where somebody is wanting to enlarge, and, I, and I, I'm not against enlarging, and I'm not sure exactly if this is something that's new and going forward or if we're in the past. What I'm talking about is what happened in the past, and maybe this is a, a renewal of that. But I think I think when we when we're getting into the point that we're replacing banks and, and financial institutions, that's not the point, that's not what the government's all about. I run a machine shop myself, and I never received a dime from anybody, and uh, I never asked for, any, for a dime either. I would certainly like to hear more information about this. And I would, and I would certainly be against any further grants along these lines. Okay, thank you, for coming. Any other person wish, wish to speak for or against? Seeing none, I'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioners, any discussion?
um, because there was a two-term limit. So I recommend that Brian McMurray be appointed to this board uh, for a three-year term, which would expire in December 2016. Do we have a motion? Motion to accept Brian McMurray. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Uh, next board before you is the Board of Adjustment. Uh, we actually need three regular members and one or two alternates, depending on how um, you look at this. Uh, currently, um, we have um, two members who serve on the board that could be reappointed. Um, we also have two members who are alternates. Um, one member could be moved up to a regular board member. Um, one thing I put before you is the uh, dates that the two alternates were appointed. So you can see which one sort of has served the longest in that capacity. Um, so depending on who you appoint as your regular board member, um, then you would need to um, appoint an alternate for that, from there. So what I would first like you to do is go ahead and appoint um, three regular members to this board and you have a list before you. Mr. is there a motion or? discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. I did have a question. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Larry Dooley lives inside of the Pink Pond. He doesn't? Okay. Just, just as to, um, con just to <laughs> tell him, Greg Thompson would then continue serving as an alternate with him. Okay. I all understand, but I just want to clarify okay. that. For women. Uh, there are three vacancies on this board. Uh, Linda Martin would be up for reappointment, and then I have three uh, other names before you. As um, and so, for a total, you could appoint three members to this board that would serve a three year term, which would expire in December 2016. Linda Martin is an active member, and I know Kathy Robertson also. Been active on other boards, of course, as well. Um, Shirley Bell and Christina Watts, I'm not familiar with. So. The Commission for Women has spoken with Ms. Lale, um, so she, you know, they have, have mentioned they're the ones that brought forth her name to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For um, Ms. Martin, Ms. Lale, and Ms. Roberts. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Is there a second? I'll oh, second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay. The next board I have before you is the Employee Productivity Award Review Committee. Uh, this is um, a committee that um, reviews the Employee Productivity uh, Awards for the county employees. Um, I bring before you Michael Krishan as, uh, as a recommendation to this board. Uh, he would serve a one-year term, which would expire in December 2014. Is there a limit for number of terms of some of serve on this? Also serve on this, but Michael's been an active participant as well for the past years. I'll make yeah. a motion for Michael to sign the bill. Okay, I'll make a motion for Commissioner Allen, a second from Commissioner Hutchins. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. The next board I present to you is the Board of Health. Uh, at this time, all three um, appointments are for professional service people. Um, there's times where we do have citizen representation on this board, but this time around, um, we need a dentist, a registered nurse, and an optometrist. Uh, so um, it's kind of hard just to pick anybody to do that. 
Uh, so we current, cut currently Dr. Kendall and Luke Craver, Ms. Gina Askew, and Dr. Michael Alexander serve on that board. Uh, and those are reappointments I bring before you tonight um, for another three-year term. And there's also in your packet a recommendation from the Board of Health. I'll make a motion.
further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Metropolitan Planning Organization, I think we can skip right over that one. Commissioner Hutchins, thank you for staying on that organization for us. Um, I have been serving on the Social Services Board for, um, for a short time and because of some uh, scheduling conflicts, um, would, would like to uh, see if someone else would be willing to serve on that. I talked to Commissioner Allen. That should be a great fit for that board. Um, is there a motion on that? Or is there a motion? Second. And second. I prefer to say. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Please raise your right hand. Thank you. On the 2020 Economic Development Partnership, Trustees, um, this is a term um, that was filled by um, Mr. Gold and um, uh, his passing. And he served the county well um, in many roles. Uh, we have an unexpired term uh, that would, um, uh, would expire on 6 30, 2014. What's the pleasure of the board of
camera, you'll get a bill. But last week he got a bill for two dollars and sixty-five cents. So that, that's what it is. But uh, most of the people in Gaffney County are not poor, totally eighty-five. Some of them are, but I think the majority is not. So uh, it's going to be very important in January that we, Cleveland County, have our voting delegates at the table. I've made it known to all of them. Fortunately, Bill has made it known. Other than that, uh, the parades and the holidays, and I want to wish each of y'all a very, very Merry Christmas. But my granddaughter told me that next week was Christmas. So uh, I think she's planning her whatever she wants to get. She's planning her presents. I know. Uh, Ronnie had promised her something last night that he would make sure that she could get it. It was kind of a red convertible. Yeah, I told her to look at Ronnie's tree. I told her to look at Ronnie's tree. I just told her. So as long as me, I would do it. Yeah. I think it's been a great year. My first year as a county commissioner. I've enjoyed it very much. And I feel like we've had a lot of great successes this year. And I look forward to 2014. And um, I do appreciate throughout the year the invitations to events, ribbon cuttings, uh, various events or uh, awards that we've been invited to. And I know that we have a lot of people that can cook very well in Cleveland County. So I'm thinking that you might have to get a wheelbarrow but if you have to get these things to go. But uh, again, thank you very much for all that you do for our county and the support that you get from commissioners. Yes, sir. Why don't you start on that?
Chair, I do have something very briefly, and apologize, I probably should have covered this earlier. I did want to give the commissioners a, a very uh, brief update on some progress being made on the plan in front of the health department uh, that will go on Post Road, uh, right behind the Department of Social Services. Our staff at the health department has continued to work uh, diligently with our design professional over the past several months. We've also gotten uh, staff from various other departments involved that will have uh, play a key role uh, in the planning of making sure that that department is brought online efficiently and meshes well with the entire social services campus over there. So I'll briefly hit a couple of the high spots uh, and then certainly we'll come back in the near future with a much more in-depth uh, report for the commission. Uh, as you know, that area of Post Road, right there at Social Services, right there uh, across from Cleveland Community College, is a high traffic area. And we have worked with the design professionals on a, uh, a traffic design that will work on that campus to get people on and off the campus uh, readily. It is also the site of one of our middle schools, I believe. And so we've paid attention to that entranceway as well as the entranceway down the food line. And so there will be some traffic design uh, improvements implemented uh, as that building goes in to where citizens can access, get on the campus, get where they need to go and get off, as well as schools, and as well as the folks that are on private property at the grocery store. Uh, the land survey has been completed. This week, our architect and his staff are ready to submit the site plans to the city of Shelby uh, for consideration for the conditional use of free zoning. That means the property that's necessary for the health department to go in. Uh, the city, city of Shelby formal consideration for that would be in mid-January. In late January and early February, uh, our design professionals will do pre-qualification of contractors uh, to sit and talk about the breadth and scope of the, of the project and what is going, what's going to be necessary uh, for the successful leader to come forward with in terms of experience, credentials, and such. Uh, and by the end of February, complete drawings uh, for the buildings will be completed. And by the end of March, we would accept to receive, we would expect to receive bids on the project. And for commissioners, uh, we would be looking at mid to late April coming to you for review of bids, award of bids, and then groundbreaking uh, uh, shortly thereafter. Uh, the projected project completion at this point is, and it is a, right now an approximate would be 16 months and that would put us somewhere in the time frame right now of project completion somewhere around September the 1st of next year, uh, 2015, September the 1st, I got ready to say next year, we're, we're on next year, uh, but September 1st of 2015. I know that's just a, a rough sketch of where we are right now. Uh, I'm pleased with staff progress and the hard work that's gone in to trying to design a building that will uh, meet our current and future needs in human services. And with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Chair. May I ask some questions on this? Yes, sir. Sure. And uh, I don't know, Jeff, and, and looking at, at the building and a couple of things, and, and I guess the question is more comment, but like the, uh, the roof cover, I think they're playing a rubber roof. Yes, sir. Feasible to have natural gas and just sit there on demand is cleaner. 
Also, I'd like to say, and I hope each of you have a Merry Christmas. Um, if you um, if you know of anyone, one more that we do need help on is the nursing home advisory board. Mr. Hutchins, I appreciate you um, find Tammy that she's willing to serve on there as uh, a board. We need to get some other members on that board as well. So that being said, if there's no other um, business for tonight, I'm going to make a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Got a second. All those.